we'll hit record from our point of view. Okay. So by my watch, guys, I think we are just at 12 o'clock. Yeah, so I'll just begin our introductions. Okay, everybody uh, that's joined us now, thank you so much. We are expecting a couple of more people to join us. Um, so if you do hear a beep, it's just people joining and then I, I will enter everybody into the room. So I'll make a start. So thank you very much for joining us um, for our latest webinar in MSC Real Estate. So today's session is a unit snapshot. And as you can see, it's around property valuation, planning for future cities and real estate investment and finance. So you will see that I'm joined today by course director, Mark Shepherd, uh, and one of our current students, Elizabeth Opiagby. Um, and just before I hand over to those guys, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, so thanks very much, Mark. Uh, so for those of you that haven't spoken to me, my name is Craig Donaldson, and I am the course advisor for our MSC Real Estate course. So as you can see, there's some of my responsibilities, uh, what I do on a day to day. But generally what I'm here for is to support all of you guys who have questions around suitability for the course, um, whether how much the fees are, can you pay installments, um, all the typical questions you might have before applying for a course. So that is what my job is, is for day to day. Today, I'm here to support Mark and Elizabeth. Uh, I will be keeping an eye on any questions you guys have that you'd like to send through to the panel. You'll notice on the Zoom um, feature, there is a chat icon. So please do send any questions through that you have and I will pitch them to Mark and Elizabeth at the end or if it's a question around the application process, maybe I can answer. Um, so just a, a small bit of housekeeping is please do keep your microphones on mute and uh, your cameras off as well. That just helps us guys concentrate as we're working through the slides. So with that, I would like to hand over uh, to Elizabeth just to introduce herself and tell you a little bit about her. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Elizabeth. Um, I am currently uh, a student in my second year of a um, Masters in Real Estate Distance Learning. Um, a bit about me outside of university, um, I'm currently an investment analyst at British Land. Um, I work on property acquisitions and disposals across the company's retail office and of course residential, which I forgot to put on there. <laughs> um, it's a little bit about British Land. It's one of the largest REITs in the UK. Um, we focus on development and investment specifically. And my role is in investment. So I sell assets that are of strategy to fund our large scale development projects. Um, one example is we sold a portfolio of Sainsbury stores to Realty Income last year, who's a large shareholder in Walgreens or, uh, in the US. So they wanted to enter the UK market um, and they thought, you know, come to British land, are you willing to sell a bunch of Sainsbury stores? So we sold 12 of them to um, Realty Income last year. So from a BL perspective, we wanted to reduce our retail holding, or well, solus assets as we call them, and focus on our campus sites, such as Broadgate in the city of London and Canada Water, if you have heard of those areas. Um, and previously I studied financial maths at the University of Surrey, and now I'm in real estate, and in order to do my APC, for example, I need a RICS accredited degree. What better you need to do that? <laughs> oh, fantastic. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. Uh, and now over to course director, Mark Shepherd. Hi guys. Um, Welcome to our webinar. I'm going to introduce some of the units, the ones we get asked about perhaps most commonly. Um, but just to give you a little bit about me before I start, I started off in practice. Um, I then moved into education, but kept my practice going, uh, as it were, on the side, but with permission. Uh, so I spent about 20 years um, working as a consultant alongside my academic roles. So hopefully I'm able to give you a balance of the professional and the academic. Um, so uh, one of the things that Elizabeth mentioned is the APC, that's the RICS Assessment of Professional Competence. And just to give you a little bit of uh, encouragement in that direction, uh, obviously students join this program often both for the academic and the professional qualification and a number of members of the team are actually APC assessors. So we help to assess 
uh, professionals. So once they've graduated, they've gained a degree of experience and they sit their final assessment to essentially establish whether they are fit to practice independently. Um, two of us are on the team that does that form of assessment. So, um, you know, we, we do cover all the bases, I hope. So the first thing I want to do is just give you a little overview of the program as a whole, and then I'm going to focus on the three units that we touched on, but just to give you an idea of how the program works. So in the first year, you study four units, and everybody starts with real estate markets and property valuation. But depending on when you start, the next two units will either be future cities, which I'm going to talk about later, and land and development, which covers the development process, or they'll do real estate investment and finance, which I'm also going to cover today, and strategic asset management, the sort of landlord's perspective on managing property. The final block, block four, is the same for about everybody. So essentially you will study the same first two units, the last two units are the same, but the, the ones in the middle, you will study in a different order depending on whether you join in February or September, but you will still cover them all through the duration of the program. Uh, I don't want to dwell on this structure too much, except to say that we call it a blended learning program because you can see there's a conference listed at the beginning of each or connected with each block of study, each pair of units. Um, so I'll tell you a little bit more about the conferences and the study expectations. So the majority of the taught units are 20 credits. The only one that isn't is the project-based inquiry, which is a research-based unit, essentially. And just so you know, the official line is that it's a 20 credit unit, which should equate to approximately 200 hours of study for each unit, except for the project-based inquiry, which obviously is twice the size and therefore would require, in theory, twice the number of hours of study. The way the material is organized is broadly, it's 10 weeks for each unit. The only one that doesn't fit that profile is the project-based inquiry, which actually covers 20 weeks. But all the taught units are 10 weeks in total where there are, we expect you to get through the taught material in eight weeks, although not necessarily sequentially. And then there'll be two weeks for the final assessment, which is one of the biggest elements of assessment, usually at least 50% of the marks for the entire unit. So I touched on conferences. Let me tell you about the conferences. There are two conferences per year, four in total across the duration of the program. And as I've suggested here, each conference is linked to a pair of units. So uh, there will be a focus around the units I've listed here. The first conference will always be around real estate markets and property valuation. Then the second and third ones will be around investment of finance and asset management, or future cities and land and development. And then the final one will actually cover options because you do get some choice plus the project-based inquiry. Now I can talk more about options later if you like, but I'm conscious that we've only got half an hour. So um, I'm going to keep myself brief. But what I, or relatively brief, I am a lecturer after all. Uh, so, we're going to focus on three units, property valuation, planning for future cities and real estate investment and finance. But I just wanted to pause there for a second and see whether there was anything Elizabeth wanted to, to add before I go on to the units themselves. No, nothing to add at this time, okay. but if you want to ask questions about them, feel free. <laughs> Thanks, Elizabeth. Okay, so let's have a look at property valuation first. I'm not going to read out what's on the slide because you know, you can read that for yourself, but I think I just want to give you a sort of brief introduction. Now, this is my unit, so um, I'm kind of attached to this unit, <laughs> but um, essentially, the idea, I guess, I wrote it to kind of help students understand the, the role of property and the purpose of valuation, to introduce the principal methods of valuation, of which, depending on how you look at it, one could argue there are five. Um, and to look at how they're applied in different contexts. 
Now, this is primarily focused on asset valuation as opposed to development valuation. So valuation for sale or purchase, um, for accounting purposes and so on, because development comes in later in one of the other units. Um, but essentially, it's about understanding the theory and practice of valuation and the regulatory framework within which valuers have to operate, which is kind of what the aims are there. Um, and I guess the challenge is to be, to encourage you to be reflective. So it's not just about being, I hope, a passive consumer of information, but being able to apply it and think about what is appropriate and what is not. So um, as part of structuring these units, we, um, we set out the learning outcomes. So I'm just going to pick out some of these, which I think are particularly uh, useful. So we're going to look at characteristics of property markets across sectors and geographical areas. Now, you start with a unit called real estate market. So that principally focuses on those elements, but we do want there to be synergy between units. So you will find you sometimes revisit topics that you've covered, but from a slightly different perspective. Probably the thing that I hope will be the principal focus to the unit is selecting the appropriate valuation techniques and applying them effectively um, within a regulatory framework, which can be challenging because uh, one could argue, depending on where you practice, there could be more than one set of regulations that might impact on practice. But you get an idea. Now, um, to give you an idea of how we test those learning uh, outcomes, um, there are three assessments in this particular unit. The first one is a group project, um, with actually, so valuation scenarios and um, valuation and measurement exercise have been swapped. So the first one you do is a group project where essentially you, you find a rental value for a building that I give you together with comparable evidence. You then, uh, the second assignment is working through a number of mathematical problems. And the final assignment is what I hope is, is as practical as I can make it, which is uh, a valuation report of a property of your choice uh, where you actually try and put all those skills into practice in a, well, as close as we can make it to a live scenario. And you get to choose the building and you can locate it anywhere in the world that you'd like. We certainly don't try and make it UK centric, although, I admit I am a fairly UK centric valuer. So that's property valuation. Um, perhaps Elizabeth, you'd like to share your perspective on valuation. Yeah. Um, as you heard before, I studied maths at university and not the fact that Mark is here, but it was or has been so far my favorite module. Oh, bless um, you. <laughs> the checks in the post. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to understand the theory behind valuations and it, why we do what we do. But I think the most interesting part was writing the final report where you have to basically write the valuation report based on the property of your choice. But having worked in the industry at the time of doing the module for about a year and a half, foresight in the course, it's like basically allowed myself to go deeper in industry knowledge and the market but add a bit of academics to it understand the basics from the get-go and why we're doing what we're doing um and yeah i guess just by valuing a simple property that you may have walked past <laughs> um because it literally can be a, a property of your choice but when it comes to selling for me valuation is key it will determine how much the market think it's worth but ultimately the price is whatever, whatever an investor is willing to pay for. So it's literally helped me in my day-to-day -day job. Although I sit on Excel most of the time, it, it was definitely one of my, my favorite modules. Um, and I still look at back, the, back at the notes today. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, well, yeah, that's great. So I couldn't have put it better myself. <laughs> you summed up exactly what I wanted students to get out of it. Okay, let's, let's move on. Yeah, another <laughs> unit we get, asked about quite a lot is planning for future cities. Um, this is delivered by uh, one of my colleagues, um, uh, one of our professors actually, who is uh, a specialist in this area and at the forefront of research in this area. Um, his name is Richard Kingston, you may have come across him. So he is a planner by background, which kind of emphasizes that we have a number of different specialists looking after different aspects of, of the course. So.
so I guess the point about this unit is it's as it suggests here it explores the principles nature and practice of planning systems and it takes an international perspective um, and it looks really at how cities are developing around the world um, in what Richard calls or perhaps we commonly call the urban age so how how are cities changing and how do cities need to respond to global challenges so in order to achieve that uh, Richard has set out a number of uh, learning outcomes that he wants um, students to achieve by the end of studying this unit um, so I mean, I, I actually found this quite useful because to broaden my horizons, so um, I get to look at the material too. That's one of the advantages of being a tutor. But um, so demonstrating understanding of different types of planning system across the globe. Um, we may be very familiar with the planning systems within our geographical region, but um, it's really helpful to see different planning systems on an international scale and the different approaches. Um, he also then takes us beyond that, not just looking at academic and, and policy responses to these things, but um, but also getting you to explore some of the key issues and um, examine some of the changes that are happening in order to, um, yeah, I suppose, explore solutions, which I kind of said already. So Richard sets two assignments. The first one is um, a future city profile a report which really looks at um, a number of different data sources to try and create a picture of a particular city and then there's a more reflective report which probably Elizabeth can say more about than I can actually on uh, on that city so perhaps that's a good opportunity for me to hand over to Elizabeth yeah, so I mean, again, I don't want to keep referring to the fact that I studied maths, but I studied maths um, and this was a interesting um, perspective for me personally. Um, I, I won't give you the question, but all in all, it's a positive learning experience. Uh, my job obviously doesn't necessarily involve planning as much, but that is the best thing about the course. You have the foundations and understanding of most, if not all areas of real estate. Um, but one thing you will learn about is, for example, is about utopia and dystopia, for example, if you have or haven't heard of it. Um, I even done a short presentation to my team to show what I've learned and taken from this unit. It sounds a bit sad, but it was actually quite fun. Um, but you'll definitely understand the importance of smart cities and the urban ages, which is kind of what the essay and critical reflection um, focuses on as well. So, yeah. Cool. And I, I suppose that's, you know, because we cover a range of, of real estate aspects, some are going to be directly applicable immediately to your working environment. Others perhaps might give you more context or, but certainly when it comes to, for example, the assessment of professional competence, some of this might come in handy as well. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the final unit I was going to touch on is real estate investment and finance. Um, this is, delivered by one of my colleagues, Dr. Sherry Zhu. Um, and I think Elizabeth, you're studying this at the moment, aren't you? Yeah. So I'm uh, one and so a half weeks in. <laughs> sorry. Uh, right. <laughs> so um, I guess the point about this is it really looks at real estate within its investment context. So it looks at, you know, real estate as an asset class and puts it within the broader context of different uh, investment types and also different investment vehicles, different ways of investing in real estate directly by buying property and indirectly by, well, any number of different uh, approaches, which I won't bore you with here. And so I guess to look at some of the learning outcomes, the key for me is um, I, I would summarize Sherry's approach as kind of using case studies and discussions to explore real estate capital markets, um, structures of securities um, and the markets and look at how uh, they can be used um, to construct and value and evaluate real estate portfolios. Basically about, um, it's basically about real estate investment and the securitization of real estate, not just direct real estate 
investment. So it's, it's a combination of those two. And it gives you an opportunity to take not just the individual property view, but the portfolio view. So actually this is a, a unit I used to teach on campus and uh, actually Elizabeth might like this because it is quite mathematical in place. <laughs> I, I I used to have fun teaching portfolio risk and portfolio return, but yeah. um, but it is a really interesting thing because um, I guess it gives you an opportunity to look at the interaction between different assets and the fact that if you diversify effectively, you can actually reduce the overall risk associated with a portfolio, even though the individual assets might be risky. They if you like, counteract each other in terms of the way they perform within uh, within the, the business cycle or the economic cycle, and therefore can help overall reduce the risk of the portfolio. Anyway, I won't get carried away. I told you I was a lecturer and I would, didn't I? So, so there are two assessments um, that Sherry delivers. The first one is actually um, an online test um, and it's open book, so um, it's not too heavy. It's not a an exam in the formal sense, um, although it is, once you start it, it is timed. Um, so uh, there is a test which basically covers, as it suggests here, the sort of investment finance definitions and the application to real estate. And then the, the principal report that you present at the end is about a portfolio uh, for a real estate fund. Now, in this case, she suggested based in the UK, and essentially you'll get the data about that portfolio and you'll get to to make judgments about uh, how well it's performing and how perhaps it should change in the future. So Elizabeth, with your, I appreciate somewhat short experience of these units. Is there anything you, you'd like to add in about this? Um, what I will say is it's very evident in, in the world right now that mixed use is becoming such a normality I think it'll be very rare in this day and age to see an office building without retail on the ground floor and maybe some residential on the top. So although it may be the same building, but essentially you are kind of evaluating three different um, types of uh, sectors. So this is very useful for anyone who will be going into kind of a real estate investment world um, because we often create portfolios in my job for any sale. It's like um, we might have a portfolio of superstores and then we might have some offices that we want to group and sell to one investor. Ultimately, this is a very good way to get the solid understandings of how that actually happens. Um, but yeah, I can see how this will be very beneficial in my job, bringing a theory, industry knowledge and detailed maths all together. So. Cool. Thank you. So, um, <coughs> excuse me. That's all I wanted to say really about those units, but I'm happy to ask uh, to ask to answer other questions if 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 you like um this was just uh just to give you an idea of how it works so we have two intakes per year february and september i hope i've got the fees right um now i, I really want to focus on entry requirements which is normally we'd expect the equivalent of a 2-1 honors degree um there's no subject specific uh, quantitative or qualitative uh, you know, we, we've had uh, applicants from everything ranging from uh, financial mathematics to um, archaeology. So, you know, and so we don't assume a significant degree of prior knowledge. Um, there is some maths in the program, but I would say, although I don't know whether Elizabeth would agree that it's not it's not particularly com complex mathematics for the most part, it's mostly relatively straightforward things applied in a particular context. Is, do you think that's a fair? fair Completely discussion? agree. I mean, some of it, I feel like it, it may sound difficult, but for example, you come across standard deviation, covariance, correlation, which I'm quite certain you would have learned at GCC or equivalent. So it may just be kind of rejigging your memory um, from old school and either way, it, it, it may sound a bit difficult, but so far the, the lecture notes will, will help you out. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. <laughs> Excellent. Um, but the only thing I wanted to touch on there is if you don't have a 2-1, but you do have substantial 
professional experience relevant to real estate, then we might still consider you. So relevant work experience is an alternative entry route in the right circumstances, but it does have to be real estate related. Okay, um, I usually get asked, is there anything I can do before I start the course? And in a way, my answer is no, not specifically, but I think there are things you can do to just help um, get into the mindset of real estate. So read the local real estate periodicals in your area. So for example, in the UK, the States Gazette, Property Week, Financial Times, those sorts of things, just to give you a feel for what's going on in the market, even if even if some of the terminology doesn't currently make sense, it's still good to just get a feeling for what, what's current, what's important, what's happening, what, what's growing, what's declining. Uh, you know, to give you some, because obviously we'll give you the theory, but it, it's good to expand your understanding of the market so that you can see how some of these concepts might work in, in practice or in the market. And we do try and give you some of that, but I would encourage you to do that. The other thing is, perhaps look at some of the market research reports produced by any of the big real estate firms. Again, you know, they, they often focus on particular sectors or particular locations or particular aspects of the market. As you can imagine, there's a lot about COVID at the moment. Um, again, it just gives you, um, you know, some uh, perhaps slightly more detailed insight into a particular aspect of the market. Okay, um, actually, Craig, do you want to just touch on this one? Absolutely, Mark, yeah. Um, so thanks so much, Mark and Elizabeth, for running through the slides there. Uh, I can see a couple of questions that have popped up. Um, one of which I think was from Shiro around when do the application, uh, when do they open in, in October time. They're, they're currently offline, so to speak, the application forms at the moment. It's just while they're being rejigged. So people may have looked at the web page and wondered why they can't actually download an application form. And that's simply just for, uh, for us to tidy up the application form itself. And we are expecting that to be back online by I think Monday the 12th of October. But we will confirm with everybody um, when, when, they are actually, when they are actually back online. Um, so until that point, or, and, and just kind of to add to what I said earlier, Mark, is that if anybody does have any questions around their suitability, just with what you covered earlier there, please do send them through to me. It could be around your job role. It could be around your prior qualification, your score. Um, and it could also be questions around the fees. I did see one question come through from one of our attendees around the fees. Um, so please do send that, uh, send that through to me separately on the email address. I think it was just back one slide, Mark, if you wouldn't mind. Oh, sorry. Um, just going back one. So that is my email address. Oh, um, sorry. <laughs> I thought you were talking about fees. <laughs> so if you if you do have some questions oh, around how, how the fees look, do send that through to me and uh, I can speak to our finance team to see how the instalments are taken, at what point in the year, how many times in the year. These are typically typically asked questions that do that do come through to me. And um, so that is my email address there. Um, Elizabeth, was there anything else you wanted to add about your experiences on the course? I know when we spoke, I'm not sure if you've covered everything. I don't want to take the limelight away from you. So, you know. no, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, I have a feel like if anyone wants to know how I've managed my time and working, with that, with, I can talk about that. Oh, anyone, sure. Yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's normally a question I'm asked, so that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah that would be great. Um, well, from my personal experience, I think the benefits of studying this course at Manchester specifically is, as Mark mentioned before, each module is done individually, one at a time, bar the last one where you'll, you'll be doing your project-based inquiry. Um, but each are done um, in a period of 10 weeks. And I think this kind of allows you to balance your time and put 100% of your focus to one module rather than juggling one at a time. Um, again, there are no exams, well, specifically sit down exams, but I feel like this will definitely help you um, in the way you manage your time, one at a time. You do have eight weeks to learn all the, well, 10 weeks to learn everything. Take it at your own pace. If you have a busy week at work, honestly, you can either do it on the weekend or just make sure the next week you then pick it up then as well. Um, but my day-to-day -day is I come into work, well, pre-COVID or and today, <laughs> um, but in general, I come into work about 7.30 and aim to finish my 
daily tasks, I guess, by 5.30. No day is ever the same. Um, but I then studied to about half eight at work. Um, working at home does not work for me, but again, COVID has happened, so that changed. Um, um, but it's literally all about discipline, hard work to where you want to be. It's definitely not easy and no day is the same, but I 100% believe it's definitely worth it. Um, think about the opportunities it will give you, the benefits to your skill set, your work ethic and industry knowledge. Um, I just saw a question about me doing it alongside, yes, yeah, so I work full time um, every day, every day. It's very busy at the moment, but I still have to find the time to do um, my studying. But it's like investment can also be quiet, so that's also beneficial for me because I can study more during those quiet down times, but at this period where it's super, super busy, you just have to be very strict with yourself and know that the ultimate goal is you just want to do well in life <laughs> and in, the, in something that you're really, really interested in. So definitely uh, apply if you can. <laughs> Elizabeth, one of the questions that did come through to, to, to you, I think it was from Shiro again, was just around yep. what, um, what is your role within the real estate market? Um, so I'm a all-rounder. Um, oh, I can hear you. <laughs> it happens, don't worry. We yeah, echo. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I so work I in like offices, retail, office and residential. So I sell by all, all three sectors, basically. <laughs> Great. I think our, our, our echo is, uh, is. Oh no, it's still there. Uh, I'm not sure. Still there. <laughs> I'm not sure who's, uh, who's it is. But yeah. I can, okay. it's, it's, it's totally it's fine, totally but yeah, I work across, yeah, across, oh gosh, I can still hear myself. But yeah, pretty much that's it, I work, I work in across, across all three sectors, um, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a good place to be, you don't want to be sector specific, because life is all about mixed use and open to different opportunities, so yeah. Thanks very much, okay. Elizabeth. Um, Okay, Mark, I think that seems to be the last of the questions that have come through. Okay. Um, but yeah, well, as I mentioned earlier, yeah, anyway, if you do have questions, that's the email address there. And I do apologise about this for a uh, technical issue with the experiencing on the sound. Um, this, is, this, isn't, this isn't something that always happens. <laughs> um, okay, so the... Last questions there, I'll just double check them on. Um, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you can see. Yeah, there are some personal some questions, questions that I will pick up around finance, but that's okay. okay. Elizabeth, thanks for answering the questions on your role. Thanks for having me. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. okay. I think that's us, Mark. Um, so I'll let you say that in the final uh, Yeah, well, th thank you everybody for joining us. I hope you found it helpful. and. You know, if, if you have any questions at all, um, you know, uh, you've got Craig's contact information there. Um, and, you know, if, if they're sort of technical about the course, I'm sure you'll bounce them over to me. So, you know, we'll, we'll definitely try and, and sort you out. And if anybody wants a sort of one-to-one -one chat, I'm happy to facilitate that too. Um, I'd particularly like to thank Elizabeth because um, it's so nice to have the student perspective. Um, <laughs> You know, we we can say all we like, but uh, you know, it's it's ultimately you're going to be following in her footsteps. So hearing her experience, I think personally, is really helpful. So thank you to Elizabeth and thank to Craig, happy. and uh, <laughs> all, all the best uh, to everybody. You. And I hope I'll see at least some of you soon, uh, Elizabeth. I'm sure I'll see you sooner. Yeah. <laughs> well, virtually anyway. Yeah. yeah. So uh, thanks everybody. Uh, thank thanks, you. Craig. Yeah, thanks so much, Mark. Thanks, Elizabeth. And thanks, Bye. everybody, for joining. And just to add, uh, sorry, Mark, the last yes, right. thing to say, this will be shared with everybody, including Mark's slides as well, later today. So you will get a copy if you were late to join the, the party. Um, you will hear what Mark and Elizabeth had to say earlier, and also Mark's slides will be shared as well. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.